two times a year get a call from somebody who says, hey, you know, your patient so-and-so has passed on. But most of the time, two or three years later, they'll come wandering back in and they're still going and going strong. And it's my clinical impression for whatever that's worth, and it's probably not worth much, is that people who go get their teeth fixed live, and the people who don't go get their teeth fixed don't. And the same thing is true with macular degeneration, particularly wet macular degeneration. If I can get my wet macular degeneration patients to go get their teeth fixed, they usually don't have any ongoing problems. But if they don't, so uh, that's the real issue. And for so many people, the, the dental thing is two things. One is it's hard to get their mind around, and the other is it's, it's expensive. But I always say to patients, which do you think costs the more, going to the dentist or dying? Right. What do you think some of the best cancer treatments are besides dental detox? Best cancer treatments? Well, you see, the, a cancer treatment, in my view, is adding electrons. So everything that I've ever heard anybody say or prove helps cancer is an electron donor. Everything I've ever heard anybody say that causes cancer is an electron stealer. So the best cancer treatments are do things that are electron like donors. So eat good food, get out in the sun, put your feet in the dirt, go swim with the dolphin, hug a dog. Um, a tree. You know, hug a tree. Um, you know, all of those things are electron donors. And that's what you'll see is that the people who most quickly get over malignancies are people who do those kinds of things. They change their lifestyle. But then you've got other kinds of electron stealers. You've got people who are carrying enormous emotional baggage and people who are in situations in which, you know, they're in an abusive relationship uh, or, you know, they're going through a divorce or, or, you know, somebody just died, their kid just died and so forth. So all of those kinds of things are consume electrons. So I don't know that I can say any one thing is uh, the best treatment. You simply use whatever combination of electron donors you can manage, whether it's taking a teaspoon of baking soda a couple of times a day or going and hugging a dog. It's all electron donors, right? What, uh, what dose of iodine do you need? 12 and a half milligrams a day is uh, sort of the standard dose and what I have in my products. Most people tolerate that quite well. Of course, that number was arrived at by Abraham when he did a survey of the Japanese. That's what they eat. And they, uh, on the average, they eat 13 milligrams a day. And the Japanese have the least cancer of anybody on the planet. And that's how he came up with that number. It seems to be a workable number. Um, just to ask again, you know, about this, you know, cancer thing. Um, I come from a conventional gynecology background, and five years ago I switched polarity, and then you know I started uh, looking at things from an integrative fashion. And uh, I didn't have much to work with initially. I didn't understand about this bio and you know the, the way we could energize the body using these methods. Uh, I started with actually alkalinization as the first thing because that's how you know the first knowledge that came to me. And uh, interestingly, as we added on, we were able to reverse uh, quite a significant number of cancers. I deal with primarily gynecological cancers, so uh, I was able to uh, do like intraperitoneal alkalinization, a combination of nutritional therapies and you know mind-body medicine, and we actually got patients into remission without uh, chemotherapy. Um, now, I didn't have access as well, and I, mean, I didn't have the knowledge nor access to, you know, this good dental work, etc. So now the patients, I could refer them for dental work, but many of them did go into remission. Uh, how how would you, you know, connect with what what you have, uh, you know, said in terms of the the, uh, you know, the, the centers of meridians and you know the. It's just a, it's like your bank account. How much money do you deposit and how many checks do you write? If you, the switch, in my view, that tells the stem cells that you, 
that you run out of oxygen is draining a battery to zero, which flips its polarity. So what's it take to drain it to zero? Well, you add up all of the electron stealers you are exposed to, the most powerful of which is a dental infection. But, you know, a person who otherwise is healthy and doing everything right, one uh, root canal doesn't today give them cancer. Mm -hmm. But as time goes on and they keep consuming more and more GMO foods and they keep you know, getting more EMFs that are harmful and they have more stress in their life and da 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 da, -da pretty soon that battery drains to zero and bingo, you got the malignancy. And the same thing for reversing it. How many electrons can you put in versus how many are they stealing? And of course, the people who do well with cancer are the ones who change their habits. They eat better, they get out in the sun better, they exercise more, you know, they, uh, you know, get rid of that relationship that's so toxic, et cetera, et cetera. Those people are the ones who you get Absolutely. better, right? Absolutely. So again, it's just like your bank account, deposits versus checks. That's, I mean, that sounds very, very, very uh, logical that it's not any one single uh, event that is the cause of the deficit, but it's a cumulative deficit, but one could be a major uh, factor in this. Yeah. You know, if you look at Boyd Haley's work, where he showed that one root canal shuts down 63% of the immune system, one can, could sort of intellectually use that as a guide and say, okay, one root canal is going to, I've got $1,000 in my bank account, one root canal is going to cut it down to, now I've got $370. So, okay, i got to get through this month on $370. Oh gosh, I just had to pay taxes, I had to buy a new tire, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and all of a sudden I'm overdrawn and now I got a cancer. Uh, other people can get by for $370 a month and keep their root canals. Systems, systems you see? Running. So it's just, a, I think it's simply a matter of, I think one of the reasons it's been so hard for people to figure out what causes cancer is that there is no one cause for cancer. It's the accumulation of electron stealers. Once you begin to think in terms of electron donor and electron stealers, then all of a sudden, many things that were confusing before became quite apparent. So, um, and of course, we have a lot of new electron stealers coming along. The worst of probably overall is GMO foods uh, because glyphosate is such a strong electron stealer and every day we go add some more yeah. into our system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we've got uh, the uh, the atomic explosion in Japan, and certainly all of California is getting hammered with radiation, uh, and radiation is as far in, as far as Kansas now, I think. So that's just another thing we don't think about, but it's yeah. guess guess what? It's stealing some of our voltage, uh, and on and on it goes. Um, I think the body is an intelligent design. Uh, I. I think the meridian systems uh, you know, explain how this, this whole energy distribution in the grid works. But wouldn't the body be designed in such a way that like you know, if a circuit goes down that there will be parallel or you know alternative circuits that sort of uh, 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 remember I talked fit? about how the we got this main cable. Uh -huh that's taking the voltage around and it can divert voltage off to a different circuit if it chooses to do so. And, you know, Dr. Herring back in the 18, mid 1800s created what he called Herring's Law. Herring's Law says the body will ignore everything else to keep the heart and brain working and once you get heart and brain problems, you're a long way towards being in trouble. He also said that the body heals from the top down and from the inside out. And in the pre in the, and in the reverse order of which things happen. So one of the things you'll notice if you look for it is when you start correcting people's voltage, they'll often go back and they'll go to their most previous illness. Maybe it's a sore throat, maybe it's a knee that hurts, and they'll go back and go through that again and heal it this time. 
and then they'll go to the one before that, all the way back to childhood. And uh, so when you start putting voltage in and people start getting better, and they have an event that's uh, an illness of some kind, they'll say, oh, uh, this isn't working. I'm, you know, I'm sick again, I got sore throat again. Well, how you know if whether it's working or not is you go measure the voltage. If the voltage in the throat is 50, they're healing it. If it's 10, they've got it again. You see the difference? But Herring's Law will take people back through all of their illnesses all the way back to childhood. Because those are things they didn't heal at the time, and they're still sitting there. The body, when it can, will go back and start healing them. But in the or in the reverse order in which they occur. So do you, do you find that happening when they use your your protocol? Is that just a standard thing that that happens? Is that also time that you know? I think uh, uh, you showed this beautiful slide of this vortex and uh, the implosion and the uh, explosion. explosion. Uh, and that, I suppose, ties in with the quantum, uh, quantum energy and quantum science of how things move, you know, between these two spinning. Oh, you've opened a bag of worms. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, there probably isn't such a thing as a nucleus with a little ball called an electron spinning around it. We've known for 50 years, longer years, that that's probably not true. When you start trying to understand what, how the universe works, what is an atom, uh, what is an electron, you begin to figure out that an electron is not a ball spinning around a nucleus, it's a, it's a vortex of energy. And that the likelihood is that atoms are opposing vortices of energy like two tornadoes and where the noses touch, they begin to, to concentrate the energy and they those vortices of energy assume platonic solid shapes. Mm -hmm. And so an atom is a different atom, is a different platonic solid shape with different amounts of energy stored in the center, which makes it a different atom. Uh, at least that's one of the theories that Dan Winter has proposed. Uh, and if you begin to look at, of course, quantum physics is basically uh, sleight of hand mathematics, which probably isn't true, because uh, the, particularly the quantum physicists are the scientists who say if the data doesn't fit the theory, you throw out the data. Right? That's exactly what they do, and they admit it. Well, then that can't be right. So there are people like Nassim Harriman in, in uh, Hawaii who have gone in, gone in and shown that if you look at Planck constant uh, as it relates to uh, uh, golden mean, then you can uh, solve the problem where Newtonian physics applies to big things but doesn't work with small things, but when you adjust it for golden mean, all of a sudden it works. Everything, everything sort of merges as well. So, you know, the physicists have been looking for the theory of everything for a very long time, and I think probably some combination of Harriman's work and Dan Winter's work come together. Now, Winter has recently published his work that all of the energy in the universe uh, can be explained if you take the constant of Planck's length time uh, to an exponent times golden mean to an exponent. If he's right, then it's going to change everything that we think we know about this whole physics thing because now we have specific frequencies that um, explain the, uh, the accumulation of energy, which both makes atoms and both makes the universe work. So again, you know, I'm I'm not a physicist, and I'm not smart enough to understand a lot of what those guys say, but I do believe that standard physics as it's taught and believed to be true is probably incorrect. <laughs> so I know just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> so. One last question, if it's okay. Uh, 
I mean, when I switched over this thing into integrative uh, uh, cancer care, and I, I started seeing some amazing uh, results, and many of the results were actually sustainable, you know, remissions even in very advanced uh, cancer. So I, I knew there was something right I was doing, but some of this, you know, I, I couldn't quite figure out. Uh, I, I, I initially <laughs> thought a lot of this was due to the the uh, molecular level, biological, physical, chemical manipulations that we are doing, you know, the, in terms of uh, alkalinization, adding on vitamins, antioxidants, and stuff like that. Um, but then something uh, says, no, this, this cannot be just all there is to it, because, like for instance, we had a patient, you know, uh, stage four ovarian cancer, we did a debulking surgery, she's got metastatic disease in the, in the liver, in the thing, which we did not remove because there was a small volume disease, because I've gone away from doing this ultra radical debulking surgery to uh, doing enough, but letting the rest of it heal through a different mechanism. So we did a debulking surgery and in five and a half weeks, uh, she is in remission and you know, she's been in remission for the last two years. So uh, I don't believe that it is just the things that I did as a, I, obviously surgery did not cure her. Uh, I don't believe that it was just the effects of the nutrients and antioxidants because the change occurred very rapidly within five and a half weeks there was no trace of cancer so there must be something more more powerful something more like in a quantum healing uh, effect but she may be doing something she won't tell you because um. patients are very <laughs> hesitant to tell standard MDs what they're doing because most MDs yell and scream at them oh no no because they, they know I do you know, all sorts of you know, different stuff so they're very open and I know this patient very well so I'm very sure she did not do anything else you know, apart from whatever that we, we've talked about and what we've discussed. I mean, what exactly she ate, obviously, you know. Uh, I, I'm I, a I psychoanalyst. Yeah? Some of my cancer patients get better because they have cancer, uh. <laughs> if you understand what I mean. Getting cancer is a relief, mm -hmm. and it moves them to where they need to be emotionally to get well. And sometimes it gives them an excuse not to have to deal with uh, what's going on at yeah. home or work. Right. That, well, that, and of course, you know, I, I'm still a believer, too, in uh, miracles. I see things that happen that uh, one can find no explanation for. Um, and so I think there's a lot of, of things that happen in that area that we won't understand. You know, when it happened for the first time uh, about four and a half years ago, I was like, wow, this is a miracle. I mean, I've never seen this happen. I mean, 25 years I've been in, in cancer and not seen this. But we have, I've seen this now happen regularly. So I don't think it is a, a miracle. There's something going on that is a, uh, I think, you know, a result of uh, amalgamation of many things. <coughs> Maybe I'm not be able to put a finger exactly what is it that, but it, it, it has got something to do with, I think, the quantum healing effect that we can we can activate through psych. I mean, psychoanalysis is probably a uh, psycho a psyche. Management. But see, here's part of that miracle thing. You are obviously a very caring physician. So if you bring your arm forward like this, mm -hmm. and I tell you to be strong, mm -hmm. don't let me push it down. Okay. Now. And now I can turn you off, and now you can't be strong. Mm -hmm. because my intention just turned you off. Mm -hmm. I can turn you back on with my intention and you'll be strong again. Mm -hmm. Or I can turn you off again and you'll be weak again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's my intention of getting you well is a powerful oh, okay. phenomenon. Now, how do you explain that? Yeah, that, that, that's basically... That, that's basically, see, we are trying to put everything into cap tablets and capsules and something. Uh, I'm trying... How do we put this into a there is something magic that can happen when you go to someone who listens to you and wants to get you well just like I just showed you I can make you strong or weak with my intention and so part of the formula that we don't know how to package. Want to, to package <laughs> is your intention because you are a loving caring physician that is a powerful thing for your patients that same patient could probably go to another physician who's thinking about getting on the golf course and they won't get the same result right yeah i i think i think there's, there's definitely a lot of truth to that could, could you 
test for my wisdom too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we testing? Your tooth? Mm -hmm. okay, be, okay, be strong. Now take two fingers and put over the... All right. And be strong. How about the other side? Okay. You can use the same fingers over there. Be strong. A little bit out. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Where do we touch here? Anywhere? Uh, just take it away first and be sure that you're strong. Be strong. And be strong. Okay. Now put two fingers over it and be strong. That's my tooth right here. Okay. Be strong now. <laughs> be strong. Take your hand away. Be strong. Let's do it a different way because your arm isn't very consistent. Put a, a finger to this one and be strong. Now put your fingers against your cheek and be strong. See, that measure's okay. Really? Try the other side. Getting gnawing here all the time. Oh. And be strong. Yeah, that's okay. You could have fooled me. <laughs> I just had a root canal a couple of years ago and it's been driving me nuts for two years. Well, we were back here over your wisdom teeth. Where's the weird root canal? Second from the last one, sorry. Okay, so it's got to be closer up here. Mm -hmm. Put fingers here. Okay. And be strong. Yeah, see that root canal's out. Your wisdom teeth aren't out. So. Mm. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Well, another day at the ranch. Great job. You are awesome. really awesome.